Hi guys, I'm Rudy Ponko. If you haven't watched episode two, might not want to watch this video. Uh, might have spoilers, uh, spoilers attached. You know, I should have never touched her, but you know, I just lose control in, in moments like that, and I don't know what happened. I'm just, I'm trying, I'm trying to get better, yeah. okay? It doesn't matter. All I'm saying is just I'm not the bad guy you think I am, okay? But even if I was, even if I was just like bad Rave Cameron or something, you got no choice. You may, you may not want to trust me, okay? But I'm your best bet. When Rafe is kind of convincing Kiara that they do need to join forces, it's the only option that they have. It was a tricky scene because, you know, you don't, you don't see that a lot in Rafe, but in my mind, I know with Jonas, our showrunner, who was directing that episode too, it's like, you know, is he, is he, is he actually being vulnerable in this moment? Is he, is he presenting, he's kind of opening up his chest and showing, showing himself fully? Or is this another kind of device in his tool belt to, to get what he needs? And I think, you know, writing that line makes it interesting and unpredictable. But ultimately, I think it's just, you know, it's a character at, at his wit's end. There are no other options. It's a moment of desperation. And I think it's a, an opportunity for connection, a brief moment of connection between these two characters who come from very different worlds. They band together in, in that scene, and, and maybe Kiara gets a little bit of perspective from Rafe in that when he's kind of explaining about what he did to Peterkin and saying, like, I, I didn't want to. I think maybe that's the first time Kiara's ever heard him, like, have regrets. And I think it was an interesting moment for both of them. She's not going to forgive him, though. It's, it's, not, it's not that kind of moment. Yeah, I think, the, well, I think the Rafe and Kiara together thing does not, I mean, it doesn't make too much sense to me. I think that would be Kiara getting the short end of the stick. <laughs> um, I think Kiara deserves a little better. I think they're just two wildly different people. So different ages, I don't know, I mean, a little cr creepy in a way, but. And also, Rafe needs to work on himself. <laughs> Bailey and I haven't shared too much screen time, but when we do, I think it's I think it's fun because I think we've already kind of created some backstories of us just despising one another. So yeah, it makes for some some fun tension for sure. Hey! Oh. Oh, Stop. Put it down. Uh, that was great. That was uh, <laughs> so much fun. Uh, we had to do it like beat by beat because um, there just wasn't enough cameras for all the coverage that we had to do. So I had to go to uh, bat training um, before I did that. So they had to teach me how to um, swing because I had to swing in a very particular way um, in order to take him down. So that was that was that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Same time. <laughs> Yeah, elevator shaft scene was fun. You get to dangle from a rope in an elevator shaft, and JD and I have some funny photos of where you're just kind of dangling there because you can't move. You're you're suspended about two two stories up, and you're kind of just like, so how's it been going? Been going good, dude. You know, we, have, <laughs> we caught up pretty fast. There. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, it was just a riot again. Stunts, you get to do them, blast. And as much as I can, I always have a. I make sure that if I can do it, I'm like, I will happily do it every single time. Yeah, like, we're, we're always really excited to do those stunt portions. I feel like that's a big part of what makes the show the show. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a team drama, and it's, you know, it, can, it, it dives into that romance and just kind of like what it is to be a teenager. But on the other side of that is a really intense treasure hunt show. And, and, and to kind of portray that, we need these huge stunts, and we try to outdo ourselves every year. We shot a lot of the pieces in Barbados in this beautiful abandoned it was a hotel um, back in the day and then and then we picked it back up in Charleston and we built the set and and did a lot of the fight pieces and obviously safely did the stunts where I fall through the ceiling and to see how they rebuilt that like in Charleston like shout out to our like our crew and our our, our art department you know our set decorators like they, they really put their all into making it feel like as big as they could and, and again it's 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 so fun to shoot because you get a piece of it in Barbados and you're running around the corner and they're like and cut we're gonna pick up the next five minutes in Charleston so we're gonna cut to you guys post this running around the corner and figuring it out it was, it was so much fun like I don't know like it's not every day you get to kind of do that on TV and 
we are we are really lucky to have a show that not only lets us stretch our acting skills but also stretch our physical and like our stunts and like you know we can do fun sequences like that when they said, okay, we're gonna work together. And I was like, oh, what is she doing? She's getting on this boat with him. That can't be good. No way she's thinking about turning her back and change, no way she wants to leave the island that bad. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I mean, when Kiara, you know, ultimately betrays him at the end of this, I think it's just another kind of notch on the belt with Rafe, uh, you know, he already has some trust issues. Uh, I think there's some abandonment issues going on there. So, you know, it, it's right off the coattails, of, or it's right off the tails of, you know, this moment of, again, him, him opening himself up and being vulnerable and actually trying to present the truth to this person because of the situation. But uh, as soon as he does that, you know, he's, he's abandoned again. So I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit heartbreaking, but, you know, it's sly on Kiara's, on Kiara's part, but he lashes out with, with anger. I think any, any kind of emotion he feels that's too much is, is kind of presented as rage. <laughs> I think that moment is, I mean, she didn't want to, but she knew she had to and knew that he'd be okay <laughs> regardless. I love that moment for her. I was, I was excited to push, push through all of the edges of the finals. Yeah, just like working through the, the choreography of like, how does this work? Like, how does, how is she able to force me off the, the end of the boat? And I'm, you know, I'm wearing pants and like dress shoes and you know, a button down shirt. And so we like, we, we choreographed it as best as we could. And then we were like, well, we have to just do it once and see what happens. And luckily we pulled it off. You know, Bailey really sold it. And you know, I go like flailing into the water. But you know, you, you, treading water is not that hard, but when you're fully dressed, it's like, you know, after, after two minutes, you're like, I can't, what is it? I'm, I'm drowning. I, I love when I, when I can like, you know, wrap the day and like go home and just like feel like really physically exhausted. It feels like you did something. We set that up. We knew that was going to be a big hug, <laughs> for sure. I think that's kind of maybe their first, the first hint that you get of, of them of the season, sort of. You, you see them as as friends, kind of on Poglandia. But I think when she gets kidnapped and he thinks, "When am I going to see her again?" I think that's maybe where you see him build a little more feelings. And that hug is just such a huge sigh of relief for both of them. I think we definitely knew that that was a big moment to kind of platform where it was headed. But I had COVID at the time, so Josh had to direct it. Yeah, no, there was some talk of like, is that correct? Because all the pogues are there. And yeah, JJ's confused on what's going on there. But at the same time, it, we know it was something where it was like, it's still a family of the pogues. And I think JJ has that in the back of his mind. We're just like, hey, like, holy cow. Uh, we're all back together again, which is uh, which is a huge sigh of relief because I think for JJ, it's like if he loses this, he really has absolutely nothing, like absolutely nothing. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about trying to, we didn't want it to go too far because we wanted to, you know, keep a little gas in the tank to go, you know, to save. And we ended up saving it for the entire season. Like it was a card that we jealously guarded, uh, like the whole way saying, should we play it here? We almost played it in episode four. We wanted to find a cool enough scene to get them together. So like, and we kind of waited around to dream up a, 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 like a memorable enough scene for it to happen in. That pattern, those bells. The ding, 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 ding. Sarah, that, that, that's him calling me home. I know it, yeah, it, that's, it's really weird. But it's not him. Okay, how do you, how do you know that? 
You know why. No, 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 listen, maybe, maybe you get beaten enough, you, you aren't able to see the miracle right in front of you. I mean, look, that, that's exactly how he used to call me home. Maybe it is him. Maybe the universe is trying to give me a gift and we're not even... Okay. Looking. What? Okay. I get it. You want to go to the tower to go look? Go look. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, I love the scene that, that Mads and I have where she's like, look, you go. You're going to drive us both crazy. I know you. Um, and I think that's just a testament to their relationship. You know, they've been through hell and back and they've had all these experiences together and they know that both of them need to be satisfied in order to come together collectively. <sighs> Granted, I don't think it was very smart because they're on the run. But um, I also thought it was like a sign of like, you know, like, love like you know if this is you need this like i know you you need if, if this is something you need to explore then do it i am confused though as to why she didn't go with him just sent him off she's just with her blessing with no help like oh it was a lot you know it was a lot on the day and and we had charlie up in the bell tower actually hitting the bells to to really create the the, the vibe for that scene and, and to really set the tone and In that moment, it was it was me sort of cycling back through 23 episodes of TV with all of these people and, and looking at this insane journey. So that that prayer was actually something that Jonas and I came up with on the spot. That wasn't something that was scripted. And what I was saying to myself, he just kind of was like, "Go, just go. Whatever you would say in a moment like this, let it happen." And um, to see those those improv moments of not just the fun, funny stuff, but also the truth and the vulnerability of, of this character come to life and, and to work is, is really cool. And it's just, it's, it's a wild moment because you know that they're about to have this crossing pass and it just sends them off into the next chapter, really. Mm -hmm.